Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a MacBook Air here that has no power at all, no light on the charger, press the power button, nothing happens, it's stone dead. So because we've got no light on the charger, this is potentially going to be an easy one. Um, so in order to get a light on the charger, we need PP3V42, which is the first power rail to switch on on a MacBook Air. Uh, and we need the SMC, so the System Management Controller. Uh, we need that to switch on from PP3V42. And then that will talk to the green light via what's called the one-wire circuit and make the green light come on. So with no green light on the charger, this immediately tells me that that thing is not happening. Somewhere along those lines, either one wire, the SMC, or PP3V42 is not working. So these are often caused by very basic damage. I mean, it might be a dead SMC, in which case I lose because I can't replace those yet. I'm not good enough, um, but we'll see. So let's take off the back cover and have a look and see what we find. I've not taken a peek at this one yet, so we might find that it's full of corrosion and guff, but let's see how we do. Oh. Well, this thing looks very clean except for one place. Let's give you guys a closer look at that and see what's going on here. So as you can see, this board looks very clean except for there. That is the JTAG connector. It's a diagnostic port. And that guy looks a bit messed up. Now, this guy is an absolute classic for causing problems. Uh, Lewis Rossman infamously went through a phase of just removing these on site on anything he worked on, even if there was nothing wrong with it. Because th this diagnostic port has all of the really, really important signals going to it. So basically, all of the mission critical things that the laptop needs to work all go to one nice little port that's right at the edge of the board, right at the back of the laptop, right where the first place liquid damage is going to hit is. Um, now, I'm not saying that this was done on purpose. I'm just saying it was a really stupid place to put it. Um, so that is entirely likely to be our issue. And it might just be a matter of we just simply clean this guy up or just rip it off the board. Also seeing something going on there. Although that might just brush off. Now, Zach, where's my toothbrush? That's nothing. So uh, I'm going to disconnect the battery first of all. Um, and um, let's just clean that up first and see what happens. Yeah, it looks like just a splot of water or something has hit that. There's no other marks. Is there any, any tide marks on the thing? Oh, you know what? I think there is. Looking at the back of the laptop case, can you see that shiny mark? This thing has seen some liquid. So, yeah, that has seen some liquid. It's not very much, but you can see tide marks on the back there. Not, like, couldn't tell you where or how, but... At some point, there has been a trail of something getting to the laptop, possibly there. Um, and that has just crept into the laptop, and it's just caused that bit of corrosion there. So let's clean that up and see how we do. So I've just squirted some uh, isopropyl alcohol onto my toothbrush. And I'm just going to give that guy a little bit of a brushy brushy. Frown. Let's see if that's done anything. So plugging it in with the battery disconnected first. And we've got a green light on the charger and fan spin. Is that going to boot? Lovely. Can I get the boot menu just so it doesn't actually start into macOS? There we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my own advice and take the logic board out of the laptop. Um, because there was that little bit of corrosion 
on the uh, on the JTAG connector, we don't know what's under the logic board. And at this point, it would be really heckin' easy to go, we're done, close up the laptop and sign off. However, the last one of the more recent times I was working on a MacBook Air, um, we, as we know, I took the logic board out to find that there was still a lot of corrosion on the bottom because the previous person had been lazy and not taken the board out. So, let's not make the same mistake they did. Let's take the logic board out and inspect the other side to make sure that there's nothing horrifying on the bottom. I don't think there's going to be on this one. Like, we're really having to, we really had to strain our eyes to see this evidence of liquid damage. Um, so I don't think there's anything to see, but we'll open it up just in case, just for good measure. So uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pull out all the screws along here, take this board out, and we'll see if there's anything on the other side. I shall fast forward because I think we're mostly done. And then also, once we've had a look on the other side, I'll just open up the schematic and just show you what that JTAG connector looks like and what signals are going to it just so you guys can get a good picture of what's actually occurring there. There we go. That's a that's an honest logic board there. You can see there's a trail of dust along the back of the logic board. So that's where dust is coming through the back of the laptop. But in this case, this helps us because we can look at that. And as you can see, there's no tide marks in that dust. So this shows us that there was no liquid ingress along this area. Uh, or at least there's nothing that we particularly care about. That's the SMC, that guy there. Um, so yeah, there's nothing to see here, no tide marks, no signs of liquid ingress, so no corrosion anywhere. Rest of the logic board is nice and clean, so uh, I'm just going to slap that back in the laptop and reassemble it. Good stuff. So if we pull up the schematics here, this is an 8200165, and the connector in question is here, J6100. Um, so uh, let's look at this on the actual schematic as well. So I'll right click on that and hit search and Flexboard View will automatically jump to that point in the paper schematic. Oh, there we go. It's called the SAM connector. So uh, I don't know the official term for this, um, but uh, it says SAM connector in there. So if we actually have a look at the signals here, we've got a lot of SPI um, signals. So these are mainly used um, if you are plumbed into the SPI bus, then you can talk to a lot of stuff on the logic board, uh, specifically including the SMC uh, and the BIOS chip, uh, so the UEFI chip. Um, so that's our that's some of the main things we're doing here. We've also got grounding and we've got PP3V42 here. Um, we've also got SMC Reset L. Um, so... As you can see, there's a lot of critical lines here. We need that. If SMC reset L is uh, shorted, then that means our SMC doesn't run. We've also got data lines going to the uh, directly into the SMC here. There's the I/O and the clock line going to the SMC, and obviously the spy bus itself. If the spy bus gets dragged down, then our UEFI BIOS chip doesn't work. So, lot of critical stuff here, right on the edge of the board. So what exactly was the problem? The rails up here, sort of, you know, 7, 9, 11 um, were looking very bad. And also 2, 4 and 6 on the other side were looking really sketchy as well. So 2, 4, 6. 2 is PP3V42. Uh, 4 and 6 are these spy lines. Then 7, 8, uh, sorry, 7, 9 and 11. Spy uh smc tms SM smc tck and where is 12 12 is in the bottom right that is smc reset that one looks fine however 
Um, PP3V42 getting pulled down. That was probably the issue, is that was getting shorted down to ground. We've got adjacent ground pins uh, directly next to it. So this hasn't done any uh, permanent damage because if something gets shorted to ground, that's a pretty safe place for it to get shorted to, which is why in, in an ideal world, you want ground pins everywhere because, yeah, that's kind of the place you want to get shorted to as opposed to getting shorted into a data line somewhere. But either way, you get the idea. Lots of very important stuff here. So this was another very easy repair. Uh, and I think this video serves as another good lesson in uh, for people who are sort of in the repair business or looking to get into repair, but are a bit intimidated by board repair. Um, and if you just look at board repair as a, this is not something I'm capable of doing, it's quite possible that you would have had this laptop come across your path and been like, I've got no idea what's wrong with that. I don't know how to approach um, diagnosing this motherboard. When in actual fact, technically, we wouldn't have needed any knowledge on any of this. All we would have needed to do was see that little bit of corru uh, corrosion and been like, that looks like an important connector. I'll give it a scrub with some alcohol and a toothbrush and see if it comes good. And in this case, it came good. So uh, I'm going to need to find some extra screws for this. I'll do those off camera. Um, but for now, I'll just make sure that this thing still turns on, having taken it apart. No! Oh my god. It's coming off. I was literally about to do a speech where I said, I could have taken that connector off the board, but sometimes less is more. So I'll just leave it alone. It's coming off. No mercy. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. There we go. That's all I got for you today, everyone. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. As always, my support links are down in the description below for Patreon, Discord, uh, Twitter, the second channel with the podcast on it and stuff like that. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.